Following months of online speculation, we finally have the confirmation we've been looking for. Early 2000's Saturday morning cartoon Buzz Lightyear of Star Command remains canonically within the Toy Story universe. Before we get into all the details, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, I'd love to hear your thoughts on Lightyear down in the comments below. For the last few weeks, the internet has been alight with controversy over Pixar's latest film Lightyear, described by the studio studio as the definitive story of Buzz Lightyear, the hero who inspired the toy. A little confusion has arisen out of this, with Pixar having to confirm multiple times that the movie Lightyear is in fact the in-universe movie that Andy saw that inspired his love for the character and made him want to get the toy that he got in the first Toy Story. Pixar's PR machine has been working tirelessly the last few days, trying to ram this point home to general audiences and Toy Story story fanatics who simply don't seem to be getting it, even having to post multiple pieces of concept art across social medias. The recent Disney Plus documentary, Beyond Infinity, Buzz and the Journey to Lightyear, even had to include multiple instances of the filmmakers reminding us that this is a different Buzz Lightyear. And the character is more than just the character in the Toy Story world, it's a different character kind of the buzz we know, but this is definitely not the buzz we know, because it's a different buzz. With that mostly cleared up, some are now complaining that the existence of Lightyear must simply break the Toy Story canon, and perhaps even render the cult 2000s cartoon Buzz Lightyear of Star Command non-canon. In a press day for Lightyear, director Angus McLean fielded questions over why Buzz's voice was changed in the movie, providing a little insight as to why Chris Evans is now filling in for Tim Allen. He noted, Because the voice is so iconic, you run the risk of imitation. And I never wanted someone that was going to imitate that character voice. What I wanted is something to be different. The complexity of the timeline is that, and this is more information than you probably wanted, is I imagine this was a movie that then later there was a spin-off cartoon. And then the Toy Story toy was made off of that cartoon design. Because that very much was the way it would be in the 80s and early 90s. There would be a big bunch budget movie, like a serious movie, and then would get ported to a TV show. It's not diminishing anything about it, but it does feel like the events of what happens on the back of the package for Buzz Lightyear don't happen in this movie. And that's like a future story, so I wanted somebody who was not going to be goofy or funny. Here, in a roundabout way, McLean essentially confirms Buzz Lightyear of Star Command still exists in the Toy Story canon, and in-universe, Lightyear was released, a Saturday morning cartoon spin-off, Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, was released, then the toy based off of the cartoon series was released. We can assume that Andy was simply a huge Buzz fan and consumed all the media. But as to why Buzz wouldn't retain the same voice across the board, all we need to do is look at real world Toy Story lore. Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, our in-universe version, did not in fact star Alan, but Patrick Warburton. This is either that Tim Allen was simply unavailable for a full series, or more likely came down to a financial decision from the studio. While Alan did provide his voice for the movie of Star Command, this was a last minute decision made by Disney execs to tie it into the promotion of the recently released Toy Story 2. You may ask, why does the toy have a different voice yet again in the Toy Story universe? Well, it doesn't take a genius to realize that in our world, aside from a few movie titles, in dolls, Tim Allen doesn't actually voice the Buzz Lightyear toys. This is real world logic, something film fanatics sometimes do tend to ignore. Additionally, numerous other performers have routinely taken on the role of Buzz for various video games. My favourite part about this though is that technically, in universe, Tim Allen is actually the knockoff toy voice performer and not the real Buzz. Some more real world logic we can look at is the fact that there have been numerous different Captain Americas out there at any one time since the advent of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. However, Chris Evans has only performed the character for the movies and not any of the cartoons. That even includes the MCU canonical What If. 
This again proves that it's very rare for a character to cross over various forms of media, live action, cartoons, merchandise at any one time and retain the same voice. And yes, McLean did recently confirm at the Lightyear press conference that in universe, Lightyear is a live action movie, not an animated movie. Taking to Twitter, McLean, who actually directed the 3D intros to the original Star Command movie and series, cleared up a few persistent questions and finally provided a more explicit confirmation that Star Command is in fact still the canonical in-universe series that spawned from the in-universe Lightyear movie. When asked why the Lightyear movie and Star Command series don't share the same character, McLean answered, often when a live action film was turned into a 2D show in the 1980s, they would jettison a lot of the characters and add a bunch of new ones. Going on to say, in the case of Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, the producers of the show wanted to start fresh and only kept Buzz and Zerg from Lightyear. The three-eyed aliens were added because Pizza Planet was also a major sponsor. When challenged over why Star Command wouldn't have featured the money-making socks if it was truly based on the movie, McLean said, what you're saying makes sense. They should have included socks, but unfortunately the creative execs behind Buzz Lightyear of Star Command decided to go in another direction. Of course, McLean is talking all in-universe terms and making a few cheeky little jokes along the way, and it's easy to make arguments like this, but it's clear to see that a lot of thought went into this movie, which is essentially a work of reverse engineering, with filmmakers approaching it from every possible angle and really working out a solid timeline after the fact. It is, however, worth noting that the original Toy Story was actually supposed to open with a Buzz Lightyear cartoon, with the original creators having always intended the toy to be a piece of merchandising from a cartoon. In this original opening sequence, Buzz is seen fighting Emperor Zurg in an action-packed episode finale. This was eventually removed after a rework of the movie following a disastrous screening of the original story reel with Disney execs. Described as one of the movie's biggest losses, it was eventually reworked into the video game opening of Toy Story 2. Tad Stones, creator of the Star Command series, has even acknowledged he knew of these ideas when originally crafting the cartoon, showing that this has made up the fabric of the franchise since the very start. So there you have it, Lightyear and Star Command both exist in the Toy Story world, despite fan nitpicks and people's desire to prove things wrong. While it does take some time to get one's head around, it's pretty easy to see what Pixar and McLean have done with Lightyear, and I think it's fantastic. If you'd like to learn more about Buzz Lightyear, Lightyear and Star Command, I'm just about to release a Buzz Lightyear Evolution video. If it's been released by the time you see this video, it's linked after the jump. And at that, I'm throwing it over to you, I want to know what are your thoughts on the Lightyear timeline? Are you still confused or has this cleared it all up for you? Weigh in with those thoughts down below. I'd also like to know if you've seen it, what were your thoughts on Lightyear? Once again, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching.